Welcome to the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show, where we dive deep into the hottest trends in health, beauty, and cosmetic treatments. I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. One of the most fascinating trends in plastic surgery today is regenerative treatments, or using a patient's own tissues in the form of platelet-rich plasma or stem cells to turn back the clock. More and more patients are benefiting from the amazing rejuvenative effects of these holistic procedures. Tens of thousands of patients are not just having their wrinkles smooth, but they're also seeing improvements in incontinence and even their private relations. But unfortunately, not all of these trendy treatments work. So today I'm joined by an expert in procedures utilizing platelet-rich plasma and the founder of Amplified Regenerative Therapies, one of the most prominent centers for regenerative treatments in the United States. So let's get started. My guest this week is a doctor of oriental medicine. She founded the Santa Fe Soul Center for Optimal Health 12 years ago, and her team now offers a comprehensive menu of cutting-edge alternative treatments to improve health and appearance, such as Prolozone, the Vampire Facial, the O-Shot and the P-Shot, Acupuncture, Applied Kinesiology, and Pulsed Electromagnetic Therapy. Combined, these treatments are called Amplified Regenerative Therapies. She is also the author of the best-selling book, Travel with Vitality, Seven Simple Solutions to Sleeping, Staying Fit, and Avoiding Illness. She has been quoted in multiple outlets and was a guest on the super popular Bulletproof Radio podcast. I'd like to welcome my good friend, Dr. Robin Benson, to the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Robin. Uh, I'm really excited to talk with you about your regenerative therapies. So I think we've got a lot of cool and exciting stuff to talk about today. Absolutely. It's so good to be here with you. Well, let's start with your background. Now, you are a doctor of oriental medicine. And I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what that means. So can you tell us, the listeners and the viewers today, what your background is, how you become a doctor of oriental medicine, the type of schooling and where that has led to you know you to where you are today. Okay, so I've been practicing for 25 years, and that's a long time. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you, Chinese medicine is fascinating. I just want to just put it out there. It's the oldest continuous form of medicine on the planet. Mm-hmm. And so I did my undergraduate degree in sports medicine, and I was always interested in natural medicine. I thought, you know, I was just struggling. Do I want to be a medical doctor? Do I want to get into exercise physiology? And when I moved to Santa Fe, I discovered Chinese medicine. So acupuncture and herbs. That's mostly what I do as an acupuncturist. And what I love about it is it's integrative. We look at diet. We we don't really even look at disease. We look at syndromes that are happening in your body, which is really cool. So you never treat two diabetic patients the same. Mm-hmm. And so I went to, after my undergraduate degree, I got my undergraduate degree, three years of, of schooling to get my DOM. Mm-hmm. And then I also studied in China, which is fascinating. Um, to go there and to study with doctors. And I had an amazing education, probably learned more in those three months in China than I did in my three years of of education. But it's grown. This whole field of Chinese medicine has grown tremendously all around the world because people are really looking for complementary approaches to their their health issues. And acupuncture is fantastic for pain. The National Institute of Health has endorsed it for nausea, for, for pregnancy, mm-hmm. for pregnancy, and for you know anything in terms of brain optimization and any type of functional issues in the body. So gastrointestinal issues, I'm just trying to think of the ones that I treat a lot. I work with women, I work with men, I work with children, all ages. So and I still love it after all these years. How much of your practice is actual acupuncture and how much of it are some of these other treatments? You know, I'd say probably 60% acupuncture. I'm actually doing less of it because I am so busy with my regenerative practices. And, but, but mostly when people come in first to work with me, no matter what, I like to get a sense of how their body's functioning to even optimize the regenerative therapies that I might offer them. So we, we actually touch the body. We take your pulses. There's so much. If, if, if I don't even read a history, mm-hmm. a patient's history, I can tell so much about your current state of health just by reading your pulses and looking at your tongue. And then we also do abdominal diagnosis as well. So I, yeah, so I'd say about 60%, but moving in even Chinese medicine, 
you know, with the herbal approach and acupuncture, scalp acupuncture, all the ways in which I treat my patients is regenerative, right? We're either degenerating rapidly, accelerated degeneration, which we're seeing so much of today in this world, or we regenerating. And that's what I'm optimizing. So I think, you know, we, when we think about Chinese medicine, acupuncture is always on the top of our list of things that we know actually work, but we don't necessarily have the science to show exactly why. And, and that's why I'm really fascinated with you and kind of the direction that you have gone with your practice because now you have taken those types of treatments and you've taken it to the next level and you've gone very, very state of the art. And, and that's, this is where you have gone into this whole amplified regenerative therapy. So can you describe what are amplified regenerative therapies? Woohoo. Well, the, the main one that I do is probably platelet, it's known as PRP, platelet rich plasma. And another one is ozone in medicine. So I do something that is so incredibly effective called prolozone, where I actually inject a proliferative agent, which includes procaine, dextrose, and other substances, followed by ozone. So I can't even tell you how many surgeries have been prevented in the last 14 years that I've been doing this. And basically what happens is you can just see it right under ultrasound when I do the injection. So if you have a loose ligament, it immediately helps to restore the nature of ligaments and tendons in the body. It increases blood flow. Of course, when you're creating trauma in an area, like when I do the injections, the brain is saying, woo, there's there's an injury here. So all of the healing agents go to that area that area. So mm-hmm. the use of ozone, even in cosmetic, cosmetic um, procedures that I do is fantastic. So I use it when I do faces, when I'm doing breasts, when I'm doing um, just about every part of the body, I, I add the ozone for that extra boost. So what do you think specifically then the ozone does to either increase healing or to uh, in, you know, increase the rejuvenation, enhance the rejuvenation of an area? Well, a lot of it is just the oxygenation. And in terms of when I do IV therapies with ozone, when we think of all those, those um, oxidative, the oxidative stress, the mm-hmm. rusting that's happening, it really helps to act as an antidote to that. And so when I inject knees, when I inject hips, the ozone, what's really cool is it's not just the area where the pain is. It spreads out two or three inches, so it covers a big area. Plus, it's, it's creating trauma, so that cytokine reaction happens, mm-hmm. which promotes the healing effect. Yeah, well, let's go in now to the PRP, because um, this is a super exciting uh, part of the field, really of not just plastic surgery and cosmetic treatments, but about all of medicine as well. And this is where I think a lot of my listeners, a lot of my viewers are probably really interested because you have kind of embraced the whole spectrum of PRP treatments for cosmetic use from PRP into the facial areas to PRP Mm. into the breast to PRP down under. So let's kind of go from top to bottom. But before actually we do that, can you explain what PRP therapy is and, and how it generally works? And then we'll go to kind of each body part that you like to treat and we'll go into detail with those. Absolutely. So platelet-rich plasma, what we do is we take about 60 cc's of your blood and then we spin that in an FDA-approved centrifuge and we derive from that spin your platelets, your platelet-rich plasma. And we also derive your platelet-poor plasma, so I do use that as well because it's full of great nutrients. And so we take that, so we we actually usually get about 10 to 12 cc's Mm -hmm. and I actually inject that intervaginally in the penis. I know that sounds ouchy, but it's really not bad at all. We'll get into that Uh, and then onto the face as well. So that that platelet-rich plasma is full of goodness. I mean, that's where your growth factors are. And when you when you put that into your body, that increases circulation. It, it grows new and healthy tissue. So it restores that youthfulness in joints and in our sexual parts and on our face. Yeah. And I've been a fan of PRP for quite a long time. And uh, back in, gosh, I don't even remember when this was. This was maybe 10 years ago when the whole vampire facelift thing started coming out. I did a segment on Rachel Ray where we actually did a vampire facelift at the time. Now, this is before it was trademarked and all that. Basically, it was PRP. You draw blood. You spin out the platelets. The platelets are filled with growth factors, and you inject that into parts of the face. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind that when we started doing it was that it would act as kind of a self-filler. 
And the, the product name at the time was called Cell Fill, Cell Fill. And so we used it as a filler so that you didn't have to use a hyaluronic acid um, mm -hmm. or some of these other ones. And honestly, we had some results with it, but I was a little disappointed with what I saw with its actual filling capabilities. What Now, I know you're doing the vampire facelift, and I know it's a trademarked procedure. Right. Um, how different is that from really what I did, where we spun it down, we mixed it with a few things, and basically re-injected it? Is there anything else to it, or is it pretty much this, a similar type of thing? Or can you even share that? Because I know it's a trademarked procedure. No, I, th I think what you're asking, I mean, if we... I do the, the facelift and the, the vampire facial mm -hmm. with just PRP. I okay. chose not to do add any fillers. However, I think it's a, it, it is a good thing. So people, it depends on, on the individual. Like when I'm treating a 70 year old who has lots and lots of wrinkles, volume depleted in areas, I think adding a filler is actually good and being a natural doctor that I am, I'm okay with Juvederm especially. I think that's a, that's a mm -hmm. good adjunct. So yeah. using, in fact, the, I have studied with the guy that came out with this whole procedure, the vampire series, and he often uses a filler. And you don't have to all the time, especially as I work with a patient more than once. This is not usually a one-time deal because like, wait, we're always, what, degenerating, right? Mm -hmm. But what I find to be the most effective with PRP for the face is adding the, the derma pen or the, yeah. the micro pen needling. I think that's so valuable. In fact, we always do that to get the best result for our patient. So we spend about a half an hour, the neck, all over the face and it's 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 pretty comfortable not that mm -hmm. bad but it's making all these little tiny holes in your your face to receive the plasma mm -hmm. so regardless you know if i get yield 10 or 12 cc's of prp i'm putting a significant amount of that just on the face right after as we go through different sections of the face so i think you get a lot of mileage out of that and the word amplify, you know, to, to make bigger, to enhance the effect of, we, we add a lot of other great pearls. We really want people to be very proactive in terms of their mm -hmm. diet and exercise. What are you doing for your facial hygiene on a day to day basis? Hydration is, is essential. So, so we really work, work with our patients with this integrative approach to get, again, the best possible outcome. Mm -hmm. And I love what you're doing with that because I think the first thing is, is if we can use our own tissues and not rely on something synthetically produced or produced in a laboratory you know, that, that has potential risks of contamination, risks of infection, um, risks of if you inject it into the wrong spot, developing um, problems from that, intravascular injections of fillers is something that is a horribly scary thing in, in our practices. Um, exactly. So I do like the idea that you're doing that, and I totally agree with you. I think that the best, I think, use, I think, cosmetically right now that we know of with PRP is as a is combined with um, microneedling uh, as a kind of that facial thing. So in my practice, we do a ton of microneedling. I have two estheticians that are doing it pretty much all day. Mm -hmm. um, their problem in my practice is, is that they don't like to deal with blood. <laughs> and I can understand that. I love it, blood. It can get a <laughs> little a messy. I'm a vampire. So, you know, it so can. We get those growth factors uh, through a product called Tensage. It's just cleaner for them. <laughs> but I do think that if you can use your own blood, you've got all those growth factors. You've got an hour or two where those tiny little holes, microneedling holes are still open. You put the blood on there. You get those growth factors into the deep skin. And I think you can get great, great results with that. So I am yeah. totally on board with that. It's the facelift part, the actual filling that, to me, I haven't had the, quite the results with. But I think like anything, just, there's, there are ones that are definitely ways to use it that are more effective and maybe ways to use it that aren't quite as effective as others. Yeah. This is where like, I like stacking different modalities. So like adding the ozone is, is fantastic. I mean, there are a lot of doctors around the country. I've, I've been to two ozone conferences recently, and they're just using ozone as a kind of a filler. Yeah. And and I've I've seen some some good effects, but when I use PRP with ozone, that like 10x yeah. is the effect, of the PRP. But going back to what you said, I love the fact I've never had anyone have any type of infection from it, whether I've injected a hip, a knee, or the face. And what's really great about the PRP is really going for those targeted areas. So like lifting right here, I love what it does for the eyebrows and going into, you know, the lip area and someone like I'm, I'm almost 52 and that's pretty much all I've done, Tony. So far, I haven't needed your hands on my face yet. 
You, don't you need never it. know. You never know. Um, not to say that I would not do that. I just love the effect that I've got myself because I think five years ago I looked much older. I had, you know, I'm very expressive with my communication and I had a, a, a skincare expert say, Robin, you have to soften how you speak your W's, just soften how you say what and wish. And, you know, it's just, mm. it's who I am. That's not going to happen. Uh. So I, I'd, ha I'd say I've had three PRP treatments on my face so far. Let me tell you, technicians, who is doing it really matters. Mm -hmm. Being an acupuncturist and I love needles, uh, finding somebody like yourself who's got that, there's the art in the Amplify Regenerative Therapies, finding somebody who really can look at your face and sculpt it beautifully. But PRP, you know, for the, the crow lines and, you know, around the mouth, you know, I get, I get pretty good effects, but I, I will, I'm very honest. It's, it's not going to be like a, a facelift, it, you know, like something that you're doing. But when you keep up with it, like yeah. maybe getting your PRP face treatment once a year, you know, depending on your age. But if you just follow up with the skin pen treatments yeah. like every three months, every two months, that's where the miracles yeah. really happen. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think that that kind of stacking different types of treatments because some treatments treat the top of the skin, the epidermis, others you can get down into the deeper dermis. And just like what you're saying is is with the pen, with the microneedling, you know, you can really create the trauma up into the um, epidermis. And if you get fairly deep, you can go down to the dermis Getting those growth factors down to the dermis can really help to then rejuvenate kind of the whole thickness of the skin. Now, exactly. what have you found results? Um, you know, I was actually on the Dr. Oz show, gosh, this was maybe a year ago, where we actually talked about PRP for the hair and mm -hmm. as a newer treatment for thinning hair. Have you had much luck with that? I have. In fact, my clinical assistant, he was losing his hair almost completely. And you, the best thing is to get it early on with hair loss, certainly. But um, re the receding hairline and just like just little pockets, like some men will come in and they just have like this, you know, area right up here. And they could you take care of that? But again, as a doctor of oriental medicine, I want to do the research and get into the why. What's going on? Is it stress? Mm -hmm. Is there some type of autoimmune disease? Is there some type of digestive correlation? Seriously. I mean, yeah. what is the reason behind this? But yes. There was actually a, a dermatological surgical study from Italy that just came out that out of 62 patients that had PRP in, in their scalp, 60 had significant. So significant is like 40 to 70 percent shift in terms mm -hmm. of awakening these dor dormant mm -hmm. hair follicles. And uh, it's I'd have to say out of all of these art uh, regenerative therapies I do, mm -hmm. it's not as pleasant as others, even though we do a, lo a local anesthetic. Mm -hmm. But again, that's, you know, the needling technique really matters. And I would say the one thing I, about any of these procedures, it's if, it, if there's a little discomfort, it's so short lived, mm -hmm. you don't have this lingering effect, you know, for days on end. So do you microneedle then the, the, the skin, or you just inject the PRP below the scalp or into the skin of the scalp? It's a good question. We we do the we do the the pen as well. Okay, so we, it's the same procedure, skin, or even the hair. Uh, yep, we go right into the hair. Okay. It's it's really helpful. So because I know some people, what they'll do is they'll micro needle then the surface, and then they'll actually inject the PRP into the follicle area, kind of the deeper skin of this, the deeper scalp area. Right, I do then, both. They'll micro needle and then put it above on top of it, like like the facial or like the like, facial. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I initially thought. And then mm -hmm. the more people I talked to, I found, oh, they're actually injecting it, which to me sounds like that'd be much more uncomfortable because, I mean, that's a pretty, could be a big surface area. And you've got to either do tons and tons of little injections or use quite a long needle and just go all over the place. I do both. So do we really? do the, we do the needling first. It's intense. And then we, I do a lot of injections very, very fast, uh -huh. right underneath the skin. The scalp is not the, you know, it's a very sensitive area yeah. of the body. And it bleeds. Oh. It bleeds a lot. Oh my God. It's kind of, yeah, it definitely is a <laughs> bloody mess. And then all the extra um, PRP we just put on topically, and then we send our patients home with their platelet pore plasma, mm -hmm. and we have them use that for the next 24 hours because that's very so active. So don't they just leave with just this matted mess of red hair? I mean, yes, isn't it just they walk down the street and don't people just freak out? <laughs> you know, we say for four hours minimum. We want them to keep do not wash it for four hours. Oh, my gosh. I know. Oh, I hope they don't get stopped on the way home by a cop. Yeah. It's so okay. fun to do it, though. I really I enjoy doing scalps. I actually I enjoy all of it. But I have to say we're going as we move down there. Yeah, that's probably my 
I, th- I think the effects are so fantastic for people. Well, right before we get there, um, just one thing and, and something kind of go back to what you had talked about before. Um, you know, I get patients, they'll ask me about, oh, I've got thinning hair. Can you refer me to a hair transplant person? And it's like, well, wait a minute here. There is so many things that, that can really contribute to thinning hair. And thinning hair, I mean, you know, obviously there's that genetic component. And so if you're a male and your father is completely bald and your grandfather is completely bald, there's a good chance like you're kind of, you're screwed here, dude. Um, but as a female, we see that all the time where women come in and they say, geez, my hair's falling out and it's real thin. What can I do? Should I go get a hair transplant? And there are so many things though that can cause it. One of the things that I try to talk to patients about, just like you said, is stress. And mm-hmm. there's this thing called telogen effluvium that I'm sure you know about yep. where people lose their hair from stress. And so that's the first thing I always tell patients is, all right, before you even think about anything else, are you stressed? You know, is there stress going on in your life? And a lot of times they may say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going through a divorce or, you know, I got a child with some health problems or something like that. And so seeing a therapist actually can really help to regrow your hair, believe it or not. And yes. Just like you mentioned, nutritional things. Um, there's so many things even before the PRP. Do you ever have people try low light laser therapy? Oh, that's excellent. I mean, we, there are caps that you can actually wear. We have, we have all kinds of technology at my center in Santa Fe that we use. You know, definitely infrared is, is really good. Even PEMF, like doing local PMF on the head activates. In fact, after every PRP procedure we do, we have a very high intensity pulse electromagnetic field technology, which is basically using the power of nature to Mm -hmm. open up the electroporation, how you're getting all the goodies into your cells and how you're detoxing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty amazing. But I want to go back to stress if if, if it's okay. Stress is huge. Um, Just when you think about the pH of the body, stress is very acidic, right? It, it, Mm. it steals from our bones. Literally when we are, our bodies need to balance that acidic pH to get the magnesium and other minerals from our system. So it's, it it causes that increased accelerated aging going Mm. on, especially Mm. during epic stressful events. So we definitely, definitely address that. It, it's really important. Um, and to also go further, I like to do blood tests pretty much with all my patients. I want to see what's going on. What's going on with your thyroid? Like, so if you want to have a good outcome face with the O shot, the P shot, you want to have good, good hormone levels. But mm-hmm. the thyroid is also very central. Every single cell in your body is dependent on healthy, th- a healthy thyroid. So absolutely. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's great. And, and obviously the stress being a huge component, I find it interesting that you are doing the low light laser therapy because I, do, my understanding, and, and I don't do much, you know, I don't do any hair transplants or anything mm-hmm. like that, but I've looked at a lot of the scientific literature and it's, it's clear that low light laser therapy is scientifically proven to thicken hair, basically to, to reverse that thinning process. So it's you know, great, but you need to be regular with it too. It's yeah. not like somebody can just come in one time. I mean, more like three or four times a week or have some type of home yes. device is really where yeah. you're going to get those results. Yeah. And there's the, you can actually buy a cap that looks like a baseball cap right. with all the lasers on the inside. People think, yep. oh, is it going to burn my scalp? No, these are lasers that are called cold lasers kind of like a laser pointer. Like you can point a laser pointer at your skin and it's it, for 10 hours, it's not going to burn your skin. It's that type of thing. And somehow these lasers cause the hair to go into the growth phase mm-hmm. and those dormant follicles that are, that are um, in that, that dormant phase will actually cause them to, to switch over to the growth phase. And that's how it thickens that hair. And it's mm-hmm. scientifically proven it works. So definitely before, if you're listening or you're watching this before you decide, Hey, maybe I need to have a hair transplant, or maybe I need to get on Propecia or even Rogaine. And, and those are, I think, our options. But try these things first because these How are. How much is that cap, Tony? The laser cap? Um, yeah. I, it's expensive. It's at least three or $400. Mm-hmm. So they're oh, that's... not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. That's... And I don't sell them or anything like that, but that's, I've, I'm trying, I always try to keep track of this stuff. All right. Well, let's <laughs> move down. And this is a, an area that um, is huge in our field. Um, you know, I just got back from the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery meeting in San Diego, and probably the number one most talked about area of the body is the private parts. And there's so much going on now down there with cosmetic treatments, and you're on the cutting edge of that. So I'd love to hear your experience. Um, You are also using PRP, and we talked about PRP for the hair, we talked about it for the face, for the skin. Um, Let's go down there and talk about that as well. 
Okay. So yes, I've been doing this over the last few years and I work with uh, both men and women, but for women in particular, I mean, it's certainly great for sexual rejuvenation, but also there's so many, I think about 40% of all women have an issue with urinary incontinence, whether it's stress incontinence or just incontinence due to aging. And I want to just point out right away, it's the number one reason that women and men for that matter, end up in a nursing home. So we can do this restorative medicine to shift that, to turn back the clock and add that youthfulness in our urogenital area. It's pretty profound. And I, I get most excited to talk about this because it's, it's life changing for women. I mean, I had a 33 year old woman, mother of three, had three babies close to each other. She's totally built and she exercised all the time. She's like, I'm so sick of just having to wear a pad at my age. Mm -hmm. One time, not only did it turn on her sexual energy again, but she, the, the incontinence went right away, right away. So it's pretty cool. And what most people don't know is that in a woman, you know, the clitoral area, we actually put a CC of the PRP right there. And, and I, we do a numbing, local numbing. And I have to say, 80, 90% of my, my women don't feel it at all. But to know that that, that is like five, goes five inches into the body, right? And so connect, it's just that your genital area, all one area. So when I actually put that part of the PRP there, that is helping the, the whole urinary system too. Mm -hmm. One thing I learned recently, Tony, from a urologist, I'm always, always learning, mm -hmm. and it was fantastic, so I add this to all my O shots now, is I put a CC on the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock position, so there's the urethra opening, 3 and the 9 o'clock position, I, I inject there, mm -hmm. and that's another way, again, to help with circulation, it's very, very good for just adding a little volume and plumpness and health. Mm -hmm. my, my clients with with lichen sclerosis, that's, that's not a fun, that's a, an autoimmune disease that, that attacks that area of the body and it discoloration, um, and inflammation and Western medicine doesn't have a lot to offer that, but I've seen vaginal areas completely shape shit. I mean, like totally look different, like a, a month later when I've mm. sometimes when these yeah. people come back, those are the ones that I usually like to have a second procedure within three to six months, just because that's a, you know, you still have to get to the root. Again, I'm working on what's the root cause of why do you have this, but mm. I can't think of anything better. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's such a hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. um, and just like you said, there are millions of women who think that there's nothing that they can do short of a big surgery or something to treat their even mild urinary incontinence. Those women who say, yeah, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but geez, if I sneeze every once in a while, oh my gosh, you know, it's just, it's embarrassing. So I always have to wear this pad. And one thing that I have learned, and, and I don't do these therapies, um, but I, I always want to keep track of this. I talk to people about it, physicians who are doing it. Um, when I think about it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense when initially, and I thought, okay, so you inject some PRP, which is really your own blood, it's your own, um, your own platelets, your own growth factors in relatively small amounts in this area, and you're truly going to solve incontinence. And what we're finding is, is that, and I don't know if you have any experience with this, is that there are devices now using radio frequency and laser called Thermiva, there's the Mona Lisa Touch, um, that are treating the same areas as well, non-invasively, and they're finding people being able to have sex again, they're getting, um, not only are they getting more tightness in that area women are, but they're also getting more lubrication. And I think that, you know, you combine what these surgeons, these doctors are telling me about that treatment with things like people tell me about the O-shot and the improvements they get with that. And what it really comes down to, I think, is that those areas down there are extremely, um, are extremely adaptive to getting treated, it seems like. So when you think, okay, so somebody uses a rate of frequency device, it doesn't cause any pain, it doesn't burn anything, it, it increases the circulation, and literally people's lives are changed after one treatment, it, it, I wouldn't believe it if you told me that. But mm -hmm. after hearing doctor after doctor after doctor, patient after patient after patient tell me that this works and the O-shot works, I mean, you have to believe it. It just, it, it just works. And I think that, there, that it, it doesn't appear to take a lot to get these incredible results. I mean, mm -hmm. is that what you're finding? Absolutely. I mean, it, that's why it's so rewarding. I'd say like 90% of 
every single woman that I've done has, has seen a dramatic shift. And I do believe that the Thermo V has its place too. You pretty much, you have to do that three times. That's about $3,500 commitment. The O shot, the average is 1500 to 2000. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, what's so important to me as an educator is really talking to my patients about how to sustain the change. Mm -hmm. So still, yes, do, do your Kegel exercises. Yes. Practice really good hygiene. Um, we like to give our patients the intensity. It, there's a lot of things out there to use on a regular basis. Use a, a vibrator. Have sex more often. Don't just get the shot and just like hang out and wait yeah. for something to shift. I mean, once you've activated an area, you want to keep it activated. Mm -hmm. So I, I do a lot of education and, and and to help women really love that part of their body. I mean, it's such a taboo, right? That mm -hmm. whole area and like. You know, women don't like the way they look. They don't like, I mean, it's just unbelievable. So I, I do, I spend the extra time to, to share, you know, there's different anatomy types of women and, and, and there's different, it's like astrology of the vagina, so to speak, and of the male as well. It's, so it's, it's just a part of, of, of my work that I bring that might be different than just going and having an O shot done in, in 30 minutes. So, I mean, are you using it then? The O shot is used for people who, my understanding, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, people who um, have ha want to ex uh, enhance their mm -hmm. sexual experience, people who also have uh, issues with uh, incontinence, um, and even sometimes people who have a lot of dryness and pain, they find that they get more lubrication and stuff too. Is that correct? This is true. Yeah, right away, they can feel a difference. And also, it activates that whole G spot. You know, that's, uh, I think women are finding that they have some zones in their body they didn't know about, but you're activating healthy tissue. Mm -hmm. So a lot more pleasure, arousal in men in particular, I find that there's much more sensation. Um, men, I, I'm, I'm never, you know, advertising, you're going to grow an inch longer. That's yeah. so not true. But what there's just more pleasure. I, I just, um, a patient came in for a second time and he's actually in a wheelchair uh, uncircumcised man. Um, I can't even tell you after one pee shot. So I'm injecting like 12 cc's into the penis into five different areas. I mean, I couldn't, I, I can't believe the difference. I swear it looked like it was 15 years younger mm -hmm. and he's getting much more functionality. He's pretty much has advanced ED, but now, and we don't tell people go off your Cialis and all your stuff. We, we want to do is amplify, you know, find yeah. out what's going on with your testosterone levels and, and all your hormones for that matter. And, but just in this particular guy, I mean, he's just even getting like 40% better with a dysfunctional, um, penis. He's, it's, it's really cool. You yeah. know, this was a big stretch for him and being wheelchair bound. He's like, this is, this has been life changing for me. So, so what Robin's talking about is called the P shot. And this is, uh, we've been talking about PRP all this time, but not only can you inject it into the um, the private parts of a female, but you can also inject it into the penis of a male. And the idea then is that those growth factors will help to rejuvenate the penis. And um, now, you have you treated anybody with Peyronie's disease? Absolutely. Yes, I have. And I've had really good success. Again, this is another one where you shouldn't expect to just one time mm -hmm. resolve an issue. And Again, that's really knowing where to inject is really important. So where, where my usual five sh sh injection shots are, are a little bit different with a Peyronie's person, mm -hmm. I'll go to that actual area where the, the curve is and try to amplify, build more healthy tissue in that mm -hmm. area and to kind of straighten, straighten it out. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can't say 100%, but really one of the better modalities out there I mean, surgical procedures are not, are kind of a risk. And mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. So just to know that that is, that it, it's a great, it's a great choice for anyone who's listening to this podcast to think about getting a P shot. So, it's a P stands for priapus. So a uh, Peyronie's disease basically is uh, when you get some scar tissue um, in the penis and it causes a penis to look bent or crooked. Right. And mm -hmm. so the idea, my understanding then when, I, and I haven't done the P shot, but uh, is that you inject then, you try to inject more of the platelet-rich plasma into the area of the scar tissue, I'm assuming? The scar tissue, exactly. Okay. Platelet-rich plasma across the board is fantastic for scar tissue. So patients with acne scars, this is what, you know, to ask you, mm -hmm. when you were asking me earlier about compared to fillers and other things, we get great results 
with any type of scar tissue. So we go right into that, yeah, where that scar tissue is. And this is kind of getting back to this whole idea of regenerative and the PRP being your own tissues, your own growth factors, and trying to use that in a concentrated fashion to regenerate normal tissue. And, and I guess the way that I, for me, that I look at PRP is PRP is regenerative treatments of today, you know, and we're using it in so many things, even other types of physicians, orthopedic surgeons, uh, they're using it as well. The future, I think, is more is stem cells. You know, the future is is going all the way there, and and those are things that are still, I think, a little more on the horizons. I know we know we have some friends that are using it now. There's some controversy there. Uh, I think that the science we're still getting to it. PRP, I think, is now. And if you um, you can't like physicians, we can't poo poo PRP because it works, and we know it works. The next step, I think, in the future, eventually, is getting to those stem cells. And I know. Robin, you're going to be getting into that because you've been following all these every step of the way. And I've already done done that injection. Um, so you have two choices with stem cells. Well, let's get back to PRP. Yeah. When you inject PRP, your own growth factors, that's increasing your, ste- your own stem cells, right? Mm-hmm. So with you have two choices, biological allograft, which is transplanted tissue from umbilical cord, placental cellular tissue, right into the penis or into the vagina, and orange the face. It's much more expensive. So I have done a pee shot with that. In fact, I hosted a doctor hmm. who brought in several doctors to learn um, this allograft uh, stem cell treatments. And I and I actually demonstrated because I do the pee shot. None of these other doctors do. Mm-hmm. And that particular patient, he's a 65 year old man. He's had the pee shot, and he feels that having the stem cell treatment enhance the effect. So instead of getting 10 or 12 cc's, I'm only injecting, there's two cc's, right? Oh, really? Into a pee shot. Yeah, two cc's is a lot. So that's about 30 million stem cells hmm. from a very healthy tissue is going into the to the penis. But that's the, so you have to, have to be much, much more strategic with, with those five different areas. And I actually do the glands of the penis too, which sounds total ouch, but oh. most men, and most men are totally fine with it. So I have already, I've already explored the stem cell area. I do know that the founder, the, the, the genius behind the man behind the O shot and P shot, he's not a big fan of using stem cells. So getting back to the two different possibilities, either you're using a transplanted version or you're getting your own stem cells extracted from bone marrow or from your own fat, which is a lot, there's a lot more to that. I don't do that procedure. It probably never will, Mm -hmm. but that's another option. But I do recommend that for other health issues, for sure. And there are, um, I mean, there's been a lot of that in the media in the last 10 years where there have been physicians who have been uh, advertising, oh, I have a stem cell facelift and I extract fat and I do this or that and the stem cells are removed from it and supercharged. And a lot of it I have found is baloney is just marketing gimmicks and it's really just you take your fat i I knew a doctor who used a low light laser basically on the fat and said oh it's the supercharge in the stem cells it's like well where is the science to show that and your results are kind of the same whether you just use regular fat or that so I, i do think that there is a lot of i mean there is an incredible amount i think of uh potential with the stem cells to the point where we can regrow people's organs if they have cancer um, but it still is a bit on that frontier. So I'm mm-hmm. fascinated to learn more about it as time goes on, especially as some of our friends are doing that. Just, well, I, just for the record here, this, since this training was just recent at my center, the patient, we have a COPD patient that received these stem cells, again, these biological allografts, yeah. and uh, a man with advanced kidney disease, and they both are doing exponentially better. That's like, awesome. right. I mean, it's, I mean, giving back life, restoring youthfulness in the lungs. And this one guy with a kidney disease, he had massive edema. The doctor's like, you need to start dialysis tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And he is like feeling 10 years younger in Mm -hmm. less than five weeks. So there is a lot there. But do your research and and find out, you know, the source of of where these stem cells are coming from. Yeah, Yeah. I think the challenge for practitioners like us is that, you know, I mean, I've written scientific articles. I've um, had them published and stuff. I mean, there is a long lead time, you know, sometimes a year or longer before the actual article can get published. And if it's super important information that can truly save and change people's lives, you don't want it. You don't want to take that long. Like you want to just start using it. Um, there are now online journals that really are much quicker, I think, of a turnaround with these types of things, which I think helps doctors to really stay on that cutting edge. But yeah. um, 
Well, I'd like to ask you, uh, one, well, let, before we do this last question, um, her name is Dr. Robin Benson. It's R-O-B-Y-N Benson, B-E-N-S-O-N. Uh, you can go to her website, uh, robinbenson.com. That's R-O-B-Y-N-B-E-N-S-O-N. She is a doctor of oriental medicine uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and her big thing is amplified regenerative therapies. We've been talking all about it today. It's using your own tissues to rejuvenate your body, to regenerate your body, uh, and also using all this kind of stack therapy of all these different options that are available to you that are typically non-surgical, minimally invasive, uh, and that can really, really work. Um, if you go to her website, uh, she does have a book called Be Fabulous at Any Age. This is a free ebook. You go to her website, um, you sign up there for her newsletter, and she will send that to you for free. It's it's how many interviews with with uh, aging? Which with I actually have the, the the book here. Our friend Dr. Okay, Steve Masley and Sharon Melnick. Put it right in lots. front of your put it right in front of your face. There, there you go. Oh, there you go. All right. Yes, lots of of amazing interviews experts in the field of, of aging. And I love youthful aging, that whole idea. And that's really what I'm focused on in all aspects of my practice. And, and I love the, the work that you're doing, Tony, in your book. And look at you. I want to look like you when I'm 60. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to stay in close contact with you. Well, before we end today, uh, I would love to ask you one piece of advice that you would like our listeners and our viewers today uh, to leave with, because we've shared so much on these regenerative therapies. I think there is so much complementary between what I do and what you do. And there's a lot that's this kind of gray area in between that's just so exciting for me to be able to talk to you about. But that being said, Dr. Robin Benson, Doctor of Oriental Medicine, Amplified Regenerative Therapies in Santa, Mon or San Santa Fe, New Mexico, what piece of advice would you like our listeners to leave here today with? This advice is based on a revolution I started called the self-care revolution. And this is, this is it. Um, that to, to really understand that self-care is a way of life, not an event. You'll get so much mileage, which is practic practicing self-care in all the ways that we've talked about today. And I just want to end with a quote by Shakespeare that I love. And I think about when I'm having my, my little dramas in life, but nothing is either good or bad only perception makes it so. So that ties in with stress and just what's running through our heads 24 seven more than anything is affecting how you're living amplified. I think that's great. And I think that my audience is going to love the information that you gave today. Oh, it's uh, such a out, pleasure to check out Dr. Benson. It's robinbenson.com. That's R O B Y N B E N S O N.com for her amplified regenerative therapies. It was so much fun having you on today. I'd love to have you come back because there's so many other things that you're doing that I would love to share with my audience. I'd love to talk about Chinese medicine and the three treasures. I want to tell you next time about the three treasures and how that helps with the aging process. I will definitely do that. Well, I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's holistic plastic surgeon, and this is the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show. We'll see you next time. Do you want to look 10 years younger without having surgery? Well, my best-selling book, The Age Fix, will tell you how. I've spent the past 17 years learning the secrets to turning back the clock and have written all the best of these secrets in this book. This includes the Age Fix Diet, simple changes to what you eat that can make a huge difference in your appearance. I'll share with you a simple skincare routine to keep aging and wrinkles at bay. And I'll share with you the best secrets to treat every single beauty and aging problem there is. From age spots to wrinkles, saggy skin to bad breath, saddlebags to hair loss. And almost all of these can be effectively treated without surgery. So are you ready to turn back the clock and kick Father Time's backside? If so, check out The Age Fix. Now if you purchase it on my website, DrYoon.com, you'll get over $10 off the cover price, free shipping, and you'll receive several free gifts, including a bonus chapter that you can only get by purchasing the book there. Thank you for making The Age Fix such a huge success.